So, a lot of people saw the video I posted on how to commission an artist, and I thought it would be really interesting to talk about something a bit different but still on the same spectrum as there were a couple of topics that I kind of glazed over when I initially did that video. So this video is going to be about the do's and don'ts of commissioning an artist. Do. Give appropriate reference sheets. Now to describe this as best I can, when you're coming to commission an artist, you want to come to them having a very nice, clean reference sheet. Now what I mean by this is something that has the character very clearly shown. If you're going for something like a plush or a fursuit or something big, it's always a good idea to have the main view of the character be the present part of the sheet, and then have alternate views or little points that point to specific key character details. It is also important when providing reference sheets for artists that it is given in flat color. Most artists won't actually work with a shaded reference sheet, so this is very important to keep in mind when you're coming to commission an artist. It's also important to remember that most artists will take digital reference sheets over traditional. While traditional art can be beautiful, there's just a miscommunication between the colors that appear in pencil and the colors that appear in digital computer work. So when coming to an artist, please try to give them a clean digital reference sheet that just clearly shows the character. They don't necessarily need all this backstory and information and what they like to eat and things like that. If the artist needs this information, they will easily ask about it. Don't. Provide a boatload of inconsistent character quote unquote references that are just a series of images you've attained from several different artists that always show the character with different features in each one because you don't physically have a reference sheet. It should go without saying that if you're going to commission an artist, you should have a ref sheet for your character that's clear and easy to read. Now there are some ways that you can kind of scoot around this, such as having a very nice, clear, flat color image of your character that shows all of their details. There are several artists out there that will do simple drawings like this, and it's usually enough to function as a reference sheet. But still, eventually you do want to invest the time or money into either making one or buying a clear reference sheet of your character it will go way, way beyond your use in the end. Trust me, you will appreciate it. Do, communicate with the artist. Be sure to get a work in progress as you're going so that you can say if there's anything you really don't quite like in the sketch phase. Point it out to the artist and say, hey, you know, I really don't like the position of this leg or the thickness of it, or can you maybe change the pose a little bit in this way? Go back and forth until you're happy with what you have at the sketch stage. Don't. When an artist provides you a work in progress, say something along the lines of, I don't know, looks fine. Yeah, it's all right, okay. If the artist asks you if there's anything you want changed, say so clearly now. Yes, I want this changed, or no, you may proceed. Give clear answers and communicate properly with the artist. If you just respond with a, I don't know, that will likely create a problem in the future. Trust me, I've seen it plenty of times. Do. Be patient with your artist. Understand that some artists can work super duper fast and get you a piece done in under an hour, but some can also take a week to do something of similar quality. If you're coming to somebody and you have to say, get a plushie, for example, please don't pester them every other day asking them if they've finished it yet. Something like this isn't easily done in 24 hours and takes a lot longer. You'll have to be a little bit more patient with them. Don't. Please, for the love of all that's good, don't pester your artist and constantly ask them if they've finished your piece or started it yet. If they gave you a time frame in the beginning, please respect that time frame. I understand if the artist told you, oh, okay, I'll have this piece done within a week, and then it's been two weeks, you're thinking, well, I haven't seen a work in progress, then you may contact them and ask if they've had any update. If it's a bigger piece, maybe contact them once a month and say, hey, is there any progress on my commission? Please don't pester that artist every single day, multiple times a day. I get this that happens to me rarely, but it does happen, enough so that it's a problem. It has been increasingly recently since I've started making plushies, but the bottom line is, please don't pester your artist by constantly asking them for updates. They will get to your work when they get to it, especially if you're in a commission queue. You have to wait your turn. Nobody likes a line jumper. Do! Understand that at some stages, changes can still be made. For example, if you approve the sketch and it looks okay, the artist proceeds forward with the line art. They then show you the work in progress of the line art, and you don't 
quite like the way one of the lines looks or if it cleans up the image and you're kind of like, mm, can we maybe change the position of the tail or tuck the foot up or rotate this a little bit? Something minor like that. Usually the artist is able to change that for free or for a small fee. Don't. Wait until you get the final finished painting with shading, detailing, lighting, background, etc. And then ask the artist to change something major, say the pose. Or change something big, like instead of having the wings folded up and covering most of the body, let's unfold them and completely blot out all the background that you put into it. Please don't make your artist go through the effort of changing something that major. You should have changed it way earlier on if it was something you were unhappy with or wanted to see it done differently. Most artists will just outright refuse to change something like this at this stage, and it makes you seem like an inconsiderate jerk to try and force them to go back and change something that they've already finished because you didn't call it out when you should have. Communication is definitely a two-way street. An artist is like a machine and will work based on what you put into it. So if you don't put any input, they will just autopilot through your commission. You have to give them feedback as they work on your piece. Do Leave good comments and good criticism which bounces off of my previous commission video. I'll leave a link in the description, as well as a little annotation somewhere up on the right-hand side of the screen if you'd like to check it out. Leave a constructive comment. When an artist posts your work somewhere, leave a comment saying what you really liked about it. Whether it be, I really like the way the shading came out. The posing is really nice. The crispy line art is so awesome. I love your coloring. Or you just did a great job portraying the expression. Give some kind of positive feedback. If you do have notes that you're not totally happy with, blend it in with some of that constructive criticism. You can check out my video on comparison comments, which has a nice little analogy about the comment sandwich, which is really great. Again, I'll leave an annotation or a link in the description if you'd like to check that one out. Don't. Leave nasty criticism. This can range from, well, this was a waste of money. Eh, it could have been better. Or my personal favorite. Nice. I hate one word comments. I always have and always will. I live by the expression of if a painting is worth a thousand words, then you can muster more than three. I've said this before and I will say this for the rest of all eternity. If you commission someone to do any type of artwork, please give them more feedback than just a one word response. It's so half-assed and lazy to do that. Whether you're just in awe for words and you can't think of anything beautiful to say, don't just leave a one-world comment. Maybe think about what you want to say and then come back with a full comment later on. There's no rush on things like this. I know it's not a whole lot, but I do hope that this video helps you guys understand a bit more of the do's and don'ts of commissioning an artist. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like or leave a comment below letting me know what you thought. If you enjoy my content and would like to see more art, work in progress, or just general neato burrito stuff, then go follow my social medias. I've got a media platform for just about everyone, so pick and choose whatever works best for you, or give them all a follow if you're extra awesome. And of course, I have to give a huge thank you to my patrons. Seriously, this lot of precious souls has been supporting my work and just being generally awesome. Consider checking out my Patreon and joining them. Even $1 a month gets you on this screen right here. But I do have other tiers as well if you're feeling extra super duper awesome. Some even include free artwork every month. How nifty is that? Like Osmium Dragon here, who has been on that silver tier for nearly six months. Woohoo! Thank you so 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 much. And last but certainly not least, I want to take a moment to talk about the raffle that I'm hosting. I briefly mentioned this in my last video, but if you didn't catch it, I'll reiterate here. To celebrate reaching my 1,000 subscriber milestone, I'm giving away a free plushie! That's right! This plushie that I'm offering is this lovely shark derg you see here. The gender, species, age, name, and all that shebang is entirely up to whomever wins the raffle. All I've done is create the design and bring it to life in super soft, cuddly form. Now I'm sure you're asking yourself, how do I enter? Well, that's easy peasy too. All you have to do is just click the link below that leads to my Twitter announcement. Hit like, follow my content, and then slap that little share button. Then bada bing bada boom, you've entered into the raffle. Ta-da! The raffle will end August 11th, 2019. So please be aware of this date if you're watching this video in the future. Hello, future peoples of the future! I will select and announce the raffle winner sometime around mid-August. 
Best of luck to you if you choose to enter. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, again, please be sure to leave a like or a comment or just watch it. It lets me know that you guys enjoy these kind of videos that I'm making. And if you'd like to see more of these 10 do's and don'ts, I might make a series out of them for various topics. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. <laughs> but as always, I do hope that you have a most wonderful day and a fantastic life. Bread.